Shalom. All right. Um, so I recorded so many videos in the past few weeks of the garden to show you guys like the progression of the garden. And then I don't record them or like, I'm sorry, I record them, but I don't edit them and I don't get them out in enough time. And then I'm like, oh, but there's so much more happening. So I record more. Anyway, I never get them uploaded. If I don't record it straight on to here, it doesn't happen. So that's what I'm doing now. I just wanted to come and show you guys really quickly what I just harvested out of the garden as far as the greens go in the garden. Uh, give you guys some tips that you can do with leftover food scraps. What you can do with the stems from your greens because we should not waste what we can use to taste. Um, and an extra little something. I'll try and keep it super short. My videos always get too lengthy. And I don't even have that many subscribers to watch anyway. So, you guys, I was able to harvest dino kale and collard greens. Now, the collard greens, I've actually been harvesting quite a bit out of the garden as far as collard greens. So, I have had several small harvests that I've, like, chopped down and sautéed up to keep the nutritional value of the greens. So good. So good. Used to always boil mine down, like the old school way that you learn when you're young. But sauteing them, I, I, I think I like much better. So let me show you what I was able to pull out of the garden today. Um, I don't get that much because I have a tiny, tiny garden. Once again, I am trying to show people and encourage people to grow whatever you can with whatever little space you have. I just have a balcony, a third floor balcony. I mean, there's a Chicagoland area, so like total city girl doing what I can on my balcony. So I actually got a decent little harvest this time around. I took the plants down to their bare minimum, so I've got quite a few leaves here. And you guys, there's some pretty good looking leaves here to be growing this on a balcony in Chicago. I mean, and I'm growing organically. Look at that. That's a, well, that one there. I have some sun damage. This morning, uh, this afternoon, I went and um, watered them. And where water fell on the leaves, it kind of damaged the leaves. Maybe I can show you a better looking one. That one's actually kind of gross and damaged. Um, but I am, like, really loving it. This one's a little ripped, but look at that. And these are actually kind of some smaller leaves. I've had even bigger leaves than this. If I had given them space to really sprawl out, O-M, O-M. Look, oh, this one's super healthy. This one has incurred like no damage whatsoever. That is like a picture perfect collard leaf grown out of my garden. So proud of my collards. Okay, so like I said, that is a pretty good batch. If I cut those down and saute them, that'll be like one nice bowl once they reduce down. So, so excited about that harvest there. And then, they're just in these plastic bags, by the way, because I put them in there. I kept plastic bags from buying produce from the store. And when I get my harvest, um, I harvest what I can. I put residuals in bags and I, you know, use them within two to three days. Now this is the dino kale that I ended up pulling out of the garden. And I got quite a bit, actually. If I bought them from the store, like, they normally give me a very small amount, especially for organic kale. So, like, each one of these would be a bunch if I bought them from the store. And they're generally, like, $1.50 to $2 for organic dino kale at the store. So, that's, like, three, dollars $3.54 worth of kale. And, I mean, these are gorgeous. I've been treating my garden with BT to chase away the cabbage loopers. And ever since I did that, I've had no holes in any of my leaves. I uh, completely eradicated my cabbage loopers. And I mean, they're just gorgeous leaves. So, so, so very excited about what it is that I'm able to produce on a balcony in Chicago. Yo, any little space you have, get a pot, put some soil in it, grow some food. I mean, organic, organic. The BT that I use to get rid of the cabbage loopers, organic. Okay, now I wanted to talk about what to do with your food scraps. So when you have food scraps, leftover onions, little bits of anything, carrots, sweet potato, peels, 
I have been taking them and saving them in these bags because I was doing some research and it said save all your food scraps, whatever you're not going to compost. You can save a lot of it in like plastic bags in your freezer, especially the stems from your greens, right? So in here, I've got some collard stems. I've got some dino kale stems. Um, right here, I've got some of the skinny parts of the stems of the Swiss chard. Um, I also have this container here. So I actually have quite a bit that I've saved up now. Probably enough that I could go ahead and toss all this in a pot with some water, boil it down, and make my own vegetable stock. So you guys, do this. Don't just throw your scraps away, especially if you're not able to compost them. Save them. Get yourself a nice little gallon plastic bag. Fill one up, and when you fill it up, boil it down and make your own vegetable stock. Don't let good stuff go to waste, right? If we can be making our own stock, imagine you're buying bouillon or you're buying your own stock when you could be making it yourself from the things that you're throwing in the garbage. Just wanted to give you guys that tip. And then the one little bonus thing that I wanted to show you guys that I'm so excited about, I was pruning my vegetables or my um, tomatoes today, and I think I'm gonna try and do the same thing with some cucumbers. Um, but I have, I single stem my tomatoes, so I take the suckers off so that they don't get all crazy and sprawl out everywhere. I want them to grow straight up on a single stem. So I, one of my suckers today, I don't know if you guys can see this, has, is it going to focus, has little blossoms on it, so flowers. Um, I thought about leaving it on there, but I really don't have the space. So I popped that sucker off at the bottom. And this is for my Roma tomato. And then my yellow tomato is finally starting to act like it wants to produce tomatoes after I almost killed it. I'm bringing it back to life with much love and pruning. Um, so I popped one of the suckers off of that. And I've just taken those suckers and put them in some water. And I'm hoping that by doing this, they don't rot. They grow some actual stems and see if I can get two more tomato plants. I'm also going to pop... Um, some suckers off of my um, cucumber plant. And I'm going to try and do the same thing with that. My cucumbers, just to let you know, are starting to bloom. It's gotten really big. I'm just learning about suckers on those, so it's kind of like overgrown. Um, but I'm starting to get the flowers. Ah! I knew that was going to happen. I'm starting to get the flowers that produce the fruits. So I'm popping the boy flowers out. And I'm rubbing them in the grow flowers to like hand pollinate. So hopefully in like a week or two, I'll have some cucumbers to show you guys. And at some point, I'll have to show you guys my little tomatoes that are growing on my tomato plant. And my peppers have gotten so big. I'll take you guys out in the garden and show you everything. But I'm going to wrap this up here because I'm already at eight minutes. And ah, we know I can talk. All right, y'all. Shalom.